Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard Gaming. I know it's been a while since I've appeared on camera, so for those of you who like seeing another human face, I apologize. For those of you just being subjected to seeing me for the very first time, I apologize. But anyway, today what I've got for you is another edition of Utterly Pointless Comparisons. I'll be taking a look at the arcade and Genesis versions of Data East's Brawler, Captain America, and the Avengers. As usual, here's a look at the hardware specs of the two machines we'll be taking a look at, or in this case, at least as much as I could find about the arcade machine. Data East released Captain America and the Avengers into the arcades in 1991. Now, the side-scrolling brawler had already become a staple of the arcades at this point, thanks to major releases like Double Dragon, Golden Axe, Final Fight, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just to name a few. Now, Data East was a little late to the party with Captain America and the Avengers, as all of those games had been out for a while and in several cases had sequels already. So, how is Captain America and the Avengers then? Well, that's pretty good. It's definitely not at the top of the genre, it's, I wouldn't even say better than any of those other games that I just mentioned, but it's good, it's fun. It's a little bit of a different take, and it has some different play mechanics than we see in those games. Now the graphics are pretty nice, the colors are really good in it, uh, we've got really great music, and in general, it's just fun to play through. Now this is a game that was in some ways kind of behind the times, and in other ways ahead of them. So behind the curve, we have characters that would have been considered tiny even when the game was new for an arcade brawler. On the other hand, the colors are really fantastic in the arcade game, and the artwork is really great. A lot of the backgrounds look fantastic in the arcade game. So overall, good, but not great. Data East released a port of Captain America and the Avengers to the Genesis in the US in the following year. That's 1992 for those of you keeping score. They followed that up with a release in Europe, but guess what? This is one of those rare games that was developed by a Japanese company and was never released in Japan for some reason. I'm gonna guess it's probably due to the license not being super popular over there, especially not in the early 90s. So how does Captain America and the Avengers fare on the Genesis? Mm, it's pretty good. So, let me start out with the bad. The bad news first is that the game's backgrounds have suffered quite a lot in the translation from the arcade to the Genesis. And I would say that that was kind of needlessly so. And a lot of it probably has to do with the cartridge space that they had available for that. But they also strangely used the low resolution mode of the Genesis instead of the normal resolution. And the Genesis's normal resolution was almost the same as the arcade game's resolution. So it would have made a lot more sense, you know, to use that resolution. As far as the gameplay goes, it's similar. Uh, pretty much all the mechanics are there, so the gameplay is fun, but you do have to play it a little bit differently. Part of that is because of the way that enemies move and react in the Genesis version, and another huge part of that is because of the fact that you only have a limited amount of continues in the Genesis version, and you've got to be more careful in it if you want to get all the way to the end. And I would say the best aspect of this port is easily the music. The music sounds fantastic, as many Data East ports to the Genesis do. They also managed to port over most of the voices from the arcade game, which had quite a lot of voices in it. Now I would say this game is definitely worth playing on the Genesis. But you may be curious just how badly the visuals suffer. Well, you'll see in just a moment. Alright, so recording methodology for this one. I just played the game straight through to the end. Uh, in the arcade version, I just played it through, nothing special. On the Genesis, I did use save states to try and sync things up a little better where I could here and there, and I also wanted to make sure I had enough credits left to see the end of the game, because it had been a while since I played it. Now, I will mention there's a lot more pauses in this one than usual, and that's because the gameplay just doesn't sync up exactly like it does in some of the other games I've taken a look at, including Data East's own Midnight Resistance. In this one, enemies come at you in different amounts and in different types, so it takes a different amount of time to get through them. So all that combined with the different play styles you gotta implement meant that I had to pause one version or the other to let them catch up. And the arcade version overall is a lot faster. I think I finished it 10 minutes faster than the Genesis port, so there's quite a lot of pausing going on. I'm sorry about that, it was unavoidable. Alright, let's get on with it. Alright, so here we go. From the beginning, you can see the Genesis game is kind of stretched out a little bit, and that's because, for some reason, they decided to run this game in the Genesis's low-resolution mode 
of 256 by 224 instead of its more common higher resolution of 320 by 224. Very strange decision, considering the arcade game was 320 by 240. And then, yeah, things aren't pretty as we get into the game proper here. You can see the background is way, way more detailed in the arcade version. There's a lot more animation in the arcade version, and the game runs at 60 frames per second in the arcade, versus 30 on the Genesis. And here is the first of what will be many pauses, because the gameplay between these two games does not line up all that closely from a timing perspective. Look at that wall! In the arcade version we get a nice mural of Captain America, and there's a nice car with a big flame effect on it. On the Genesis, we get backgrounds that really look more like they belong on the Master System. The detail is very low, the tiles are very simple, and I just... I don't quite get why it had to be this low. The only thing I could think of is that maybe they wanted to save space for the voice samples, and they did that at the expense of, you know, the space they had for tiles. And just everything... Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record on this one, there's so much less detail on the Genesis. Now, the Living Laser and Claw are uh, a little bit larger in the Genesis versus the uh, arcade version, which is a little strange. But that happens with a few enemies. Not all of them, just a few. And one thing that is uh, a little annoying going from playing the arcade one to the Genesis one almost right after, is that the enemy patterns are a little different on the Genesis for most of the bosses. So, for most of them, you've got to play against the bosses slightly differently. And yeah, while the Genesis's color palette is a lot lower than the arcade ones, uh, it, I still have to think they could have gotten this a lot closer than they did. Also notice in a lot of these that while sometimes the enemies that show up are similar between the two versions, it's pretty rare to see the same types and amounts of enemies on screen at the same time. And overall, there are fewer enemies on screen at once in the Genesis game uh, in most places. There are a couple of rare exceptions to that. One other thing I can point out here is, as Iron Man, when you fire your laser in the arcade version, it's pretty long and stretches almost all the way across the screen. On Genesis, your laser bursts are much smaller. But one other funny thing I'll point out is that Whirlwind has a money bag that he holds in the arcade version from the moment he breaks through the wall of the bank, and then he tosses it at you at the beginning of the fight here. In the Genesis version, he never has the money bag. We're about to see him whirl up in the Genesis one. And when he whirls up on the Genesis version, you'll see that the trees and the bushes don't blow in the wind, they're just completely still. Now one thing I can point out is that the music in the Genesis game, while it doesn't match the arcade version, is, I mean, at least from the perspective of the instrumentation, still sounds very, very good. And that's something that's true of most of Data East's Genesis games. Alright, so to start level 2, I think this one looks a little nicer. We're missing the foreground railing uh, in the Genesis one that we see in the arcade game, and kind of a weird decision to take that out, but they did. The colors are a little darker on the Genesis in this one too. In a little less detail in the background, but overall this one does not look nearly as off as the first level did. At least, not yet. We're also missing a lot of the comic book sound effect graphics for like blam and things like that on the Genesis. Alright, so in our first flying scene here, you can see the background is really taking a hit. 
It's way smoother in the arcade. In the arcade, we see the city back there, there's a bridge, Ferris wheel, there's all sorts of detail. On the Genesis, we just get, you know, the boring water and star background. There's nothing else there. It's also slower on the Genesis, and this part lasts a lot longer on Genesis. And here, the first of the flying ships that we fight in the arcade, it comes from the top of the screen. On the Genesis, it's from the back. There's one part where we also see there's more enemies on screen at once in the arcade. And when the Genesis has a lot of enemies on screen at once in this area and a few others, there is some flicker. When I say some flicker, I mean a lot of enemies disappear. They flicker so much. But it doesn't happen all that often. One gameplay difference here is in the arcade version, uh, it's really easy to take out enemy shots with your laser as Iron Man, while in the Genesis version, it's a lot tougher. When I say a lot tougher, I mean it almost never happens. In the arcade, it's pretty easy to do. And as you notice, it's also a little bit harder to take out this enemy aircraft on Genesis than the arcade one. And you can't even start hitting it until, you know, it makes its entrance and is floating around there for a few seconds. In the arcade version, you can start hitting it right away. And yeah, this part is a little long in both versions. <laughs> Definitely could have stood to be a little bit shorter. I'll take this time to also point out that a Super Nintendo version of this game was released later from entirely different developers, and it's frickin' terrible. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll show you some of that, but that day is not today. Now look at the difference in the detail of these broken up buildings and everything. In the arcade, they're really detailed. There's a lot of shading on them, a lot of cracks, a lot of things indicating damage. On the Genesis, we get a few basic cracks and that's it. And the robot is almost the same size in both versions. His animation is a bit better in the arcade one, though. And also, you can fire a lot faster in this part in the arcade version, which is why it's so much quicker to take him down in that one. Now, when we kill him in the arcade, we get this nice, custom, unique death animation with a giant waboom all over the place. Watch what happens when we beat him on Genesis. Nothing, he just sinks into the ground. Then for some reason we fly backwards for a bit, and then we go down. As you can see, the enemy placement is way different between the two games in this part. There's also a slight control difference in the way you do your running attack, the sort of tackle you can do. In the Genesis, you just tap the two, uh, just tap, you know, forward twice to run and do the tackle move. In the arcade, you have to actually hit the button when you do it. And again, a huge difference in the backgrounds in this section. And also, Quicksilver comes out at the end of the area instead of at the beginning, like in the arcade original. We're still on pause in the arcade here because there's just a lot more going on in the Genesis as far as having to kill certain enemies before you can move on. Finally. And it's still gonna take a little bit more time here. 
I will again give props to the Genesis version's music in this level, and pretty much all the levels. It's the one standout thing about this game that is really, really good. Gameplay is fine. I mean, it's alright. Uh, but it, it's different from the arcade game. And you're going to see, like, in this boss in particular, the way you have to fight him is quite a bit different in the two versions. In the arcade version, he is much, much more easy to get hits in on. In the Genesis version, uh, he's a lot more aggressive. In this particular playthrough, I've managed to get him into a little bit of a loop. But usually, uh, he does that blade attack where he swirls it and rushes at you, like, over and over again. And as I'm sure you noticed, at the very beginning of this boss fight, the tree that he launches at you is much bigger in the arcade version than the Genesis version, and the colors are a lot different on it as well. We also have some extra cracks on the ground in the arcade one that are not present in the home port. Something else worth pointing out here is that if you look at the character portrait next to the boss's energy bar, in the arcade version, it changes to show damage every time you hit him. In the Genesis version, it only changes the portrait to show damage when you actually knock the enemy down, or when they're close to death. So that is one thing that is pretty different between the two games. I also didn't point out earlier that we don't really see these between-level cutscenes in the Genesis, we only get the text. The one thing we do get is the single portrait that looks sort of like a comic cover uh, before the level starts. And in this one, again, we have a huge, huge loss of detail. It might not be quite as noticeable here as some of the other areas yet, but uh, we'll just give the level some time to go on. You can definitely see the water is a lot less detailed in particular. And, I mean, the ship itself is too, but I think it's most noticeable on the water. Both versions, the AI of the enemies can be a little annoying at times. Speaking of annoying, Wizard is a really annoying fight. And you can see what I was talking about with the portraits there. Every time you land a hit in the arcade version, you get a little damage animation on the portrait. On the Genesis one, it, it does it sometimes on some enemies, it looks like. But the expressions are not nearly as different as in the arcade one. But you'll see that it changes quite a bit in the, you know, in the portrait when you go to actually defeat them. I'll hit him eventually. Oh, and it's pretty apparent that the colors on Wizard are pretty different between the two versions. Alright, he's out of the way, and hey, look, it's Namor. If you're not familiar with the Submariner, well, don't worry about that, because he'll be making his MCU debut very soon in Wakanda Forever. Alright, as we head underwater, man, what a difference again. In the arcade original, we have a really detailed ship in the background, there's animated seaweed just kind of floating around. The layout of the uh, enemies is way, way different. At least, the Genesis doesn't look too bad on this part, it just it doesn't look very much like the arcade version at all over here. Here you can see on that section we actually had more enemies on the Genesis version than the arcade one. I do like the weird mechanical snake worm design on the Genesis game better than the arcade one for those enemies. But they're one of the very, very few enemies that look better in the home port. And here's our next sort of mini-boss. Mech Taco! Again, it's a lot quicker to deal with it in the arcade one because your firing rate is so much higher. In the Genesis port here, there's like a huge delay between each shot. 
So it's on a timer before you can fire again. Uh, we've almost got him. Again, the death animation frame is a little different between the two games. And as we get down into the underwater base, yeah, again, we have a pretty big difference in detail. A lot more shading, a lot more going on with the pipes. Just overall better production values in the arcade one. And again, a lot of that is owing to the size they had to work with, the capacity, versus the tiny cartridge of the Genesis game, comparatively. And it'll just be a while while I deal with a few of these enemies. So if I somehow manage to not mention it, yet this game is two players simultaneously on the Genesis, which is of course a plus. Here's the Mandarin looking an awful lot like Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. That game, of course, came out quite a while before this one, almost two years before it. And you'll notice some of his movement is also a bit similar to Shredder. Now one thing that's odd in this fight is you'll notice that in the Genesis port, every time you hit Mandarin, his portrait changes to show damage. The other bosses don't do this, or at least not all of them, so it's really inconsistent like I was talking about earlier. And what's the reason for that? No idea. Now that big ice laser thing that he fires that freezes you is huge in the arcade version. In the Genesis, it's just sort of a little ball that he shoots out. But it will freeze you like in the arcade if you get hit by it. One nice thing is the Genesis one does manage to retain most of those voice samples like I mentioned earlier. The quality is a little bit lower than the arcade one, but I mean, it's kind of impressive that they've got so many in here. But I really think that came at the expense of a lot of the graphics. Alright, we've got two levels left here. Now in the arcade, when we take off from Earth, we get just a very quick little flyby and drop off. Now in the arcade, when we take off from Earth, we get just a very quick little flyby and drop off. In the Genesis one, they decided to simulate the boredom of actually flying in space for a while. So it goes on for a bit before we get into the base here. Once we get into the base, ugh, that color palette. It hurts your eyes. Why did they decide to make it, like, practically all white? And the walls look all computery and everything in the arcade version. On the Genesis one, they are really plain. This is another area that I think looks very, very much like it's from a Master System game instead of a Genesis game. Coming up, we're going to have what I consider to be one of the biggest travesties boss-wise in this entire game in both versions. And if you don't know what's coming here, I'm going to save the surprise for when he shows up. Because if you know Marvel characters at all, you will be quite surprised. <laughs> 
I will say the controls are a little flaky in both versions, especially for picking up enemies. Very rarely it just doesn't want to work. I think it's a little more of a problem in the Genesis port, but it's kind of similar on both. So anyway, there's the boss. You'll never guess who that's supposed to be. That is supposed to be Juggernaut! He is teeny teeny tiny! Why is he so little? Yeah, I can still remember the first time I saw him. I'm just like, ugh, what is going on here? <laughs> That is not at all what Juggernaut is supposed to be like. Now they got him trying to rush and roll into you and dash into you and all that. Yeah, that's pretty Juggernaut standard. But man, he's supposed to be huge, not itty bitty. This is one of those areas, I think, looking at these two screens. You might even think these were different games, they look so different. Another thing I'll mention is that adding to the Genesis version suffering from being lower resolution than the arcade version, they of course have a big black bar at the top of the screen, so it's almost kind of letterboxed except the screen is shoved down rather than in the middle. And we lose a lot of, you know, resolution from that also. So it really makes this one seem a lot more pixely than the arcade original. Oh, another annoying gameplay difference. In the arcade, when you knock an enemy down, uh, you know, you can hit them again pretty much the instant they get up. On the Genesis, they have a window of invincibility or where you can't hit them, they have invincibility frames. So after you knock them down, you've got to wait like a second or two before you can hit them again. This applies to both regular enemies and the bosses, which leads to a lot of these boss fights being more difficult than they should be. And yeah, look at this background and this floor. Oh, they really dropped the ball here in the Genesis port. And this Ultron fight does drag on for a bit in both versions. See some pretty interesting differences in the uh, Ultron portrait for both his regular portrait and his damage portrait. Alright, finally we head off to the last level. And for our space scene, yeah, as you probably guessed, it looks a lot better in the arcade one. Which is kind of sad, because even the arcade one is not all that detailed. It's just that much less detailed on the Genesis port. But I've got to say, despite all these differences I'm pointing out and everything, this was still a great version to have at home if you like the arcade one. No, the gameplay is not super accurate, especially if we look at other Genesis ports, you know, of things like Strider and Golden Axe and all that. But it was definitely similar enough that pretty much everyone that played this game enjoyed it back then. We can look at it now, you know, many years later, almost 30 years later, and say, hey, you know, what's going on here? How could anyone have thought this was acceptable back then? But the thing is, this would have been considered a fairly close port. Now, no one would have said it was arcade perfect, or at least no one who was being honest with themselves, but it had enough of that arcade spirit, where it felt enough like the arcade game, it looked just enough like it, and it sounded just enough like it, 
that you are happy to be able to play it at home. And here on the Genesis, you know, there are some sections right here in this area where we can see some of that flicker I was talking about earlier. And again, it only lasts, you know, for the briefest of moments, but it is in there, so it is worth bringing up. Oh, another thing I'll point out is in the flying section in level 2, and the flying section here in level 5, in the Genesis port, sometimes enemies drop energy replenishing pills, which, uh, like there, you see on the Genesis, those are not in the arcade version at all. So that's a noticeable difference between them. And as we get to the area here with the laser, we're going to see one of the biggest differences in the game. In the arcade, you can start damaging the laser immediately. On the Genesis, when you shoot here, nothing happens. We don't have any of the you know, electricity bolts or anything like that going on. As we go down the shaft, we get just a couple of real basic primary colors. We're missing the complex, you know, twisted diagonal pipes of the arcade one here. And the laser itself, the design, is a lot more simplified. It's much more angular, and the arcade version, it's very rounded and has a lot of detail. And again, I find this whole thing to look pretty Master System-like in this area. I mean, basically, I would probably say that Genesis Captain America and the Avengers looks kind of like a Master System game that has way more sprites than the typical Master System game. But other than that, the color palette, the size of the enemies, you know, and just everything else about it has sort of that 8-bit Master System look, even the, the frame rate being low was something that, you know, we saw a lot in Master System games. And look at this part where you're sliding down. There's like, ugh, there's no detail on Genesis at all here. What happened? Oh, Crossbones here looks quite a bit different between the two versions. And as we fight these control enemies in the arcade, we get to see the wall slowly close down. In the Genesis, it just magically appears. And again on Genesis, the background is basically entirely devoid of detail here, save for just a few lines. In the arcade, we have a lot of complex shading, we see a lot of lights and everything on the wall in the back, and there's just way, way more detail on the wall on the right side of the screen. Lots of lines, lots of lights, just lots of intricate design. On the Genesis, it's basically one solid color with a few lines on it. And in the arcade, it explodes when you defeat the enemies. On the Genesis one, it just vanishes. And then here you see we get a big fancy looking spinning disc on the floor in the arcade. And also in the arcade, if you look at the monitors in the background, we see things like some of the prior bosses. We have Whirlwind, the Mech Taco, one of my favorites, and the, uh, the big sentinel looking robot thing. On the Genesis, we don't have any of that stuff here. We lost that on the spinning disc and all the stuff on the monitors. And here's our crossbones fight in both versions. And man, look at the difference in those character portraits. <laughs> I find that in the Genesis version, the portrait for uh, Crossbones looks kind of like Vision, almost. And speaking of Vision, oh man, did you see when I did my video last week of Vision's weird walking animation on Genesis? I'll show it again maybe in the last segment here for a laugh. But, uh, you know, after we finish the game and the credits have finished rolling. <laughs> 
And here's one where the pattern's a little simpler on Genesis. And also on Genesis, I don't think you could pick up those little explosive things he throws on the ground. Uh, I'm not gonna say for sure, because I don't remember. I know I tried, and I think I wasn't able to. But in the arcade, it's easy to pick them up and throw them back to him. Or I should say, throw them back at him. Now that we've got him out of the way, we see Red Skull, and his outfit's a different color on the arcade one, and he's smoking in the arcade version. He's not smoking on Genesis. And in the arcade, we walk up some stairs. On the Genesis, we just jump up to another platform, and there are no stairs. Look at the background here while you're fighting this batch of enemies. Again, there's almost nothing going on in the Genesis port, and everything is very simple and angular, and the colors are very basic. I mean, th this game should have looked better than it does. It really should have. Don't worry, we'll be up to that Red Skull fight in just a moment on the Genesis here. So take a look at the, uh, the ship that Red Skull is standing on in the arcade version. Then watch it while we get into the Genesis port. Look at all of that simplification they did. They took all the complexity out of it, made it sort of basic straight angular lines, they got rid of a bit of the wing. They got rid of a section on the top right area. They got rid of what might be a little fuselage type area. Just super basic. The background on the Genesis is just very, very dark with almost no detail. In the arcade version, again, we have a lot more detail in the background and greater variety of lights and everything. And as we fight the mechanical version of Red Skull here, uh, he looks pretty good in both. I mean, the color palette's way different. In the arcade one, as you hit him, we get big electric sparks every time you land a blow. We don't have any of that on Genesis. Now on Genesis, the Mecha Skull guy does have most of his moves. His animation is definitely simplified. It still looks pretty good, though. I mean, he's still huge. It was pretty impressive to see this back when it was new. And the biggest issue, I think, you know, that most people would have with this game visually is that we know the system was capable of so much more. I mean, when we saw things like Streets of Rage 2 come along, you know, it was vastly superior to this, and looked like an arcade game with just fewer colors. For Genesis Captain America and the Avengers, I don't think anyone's gonna mistake it for an arcade quality game. It's fun, it's good. It doesn't look terrible, but I mean, it could have looked a lot closer. Here we can see the Avengers ship, I don't know if it's a Quinjet or whatever, enters differently and isn't even facing the same direction in both versions. Kind of interesting, wonder why they did that. And here's our ending. In the arcade we get some more comic panels and sort of a cutscene. The Genesis, we don't get pretty much any of that. We have a nice little Red Skull laughing at us, which was the same thing that showed on that monitor in the prior level. On Genesis here we get just another plain old wall of text. In the arcade we have the text slowly scroll in, or at least we have a picture and a view of the Quinjet or whatever it is, sorry if I got that wrong, just kind of hovering above uh, the base. And then in the scene after this, we go to Iron Man, 
because I was playing as him, just flying alone in space. And what's sort of funny is how fast the space background is floating by in this part. And you might say, hey, why is that funny? And I'd say, hey, because look at the scrolling area, the auto-scrolling areas like this. In the earlier levels on the Genesis one, they were a lot slower than the arcade original, right? Watch the arcade scrolling when it comes up for this part. Which it will soon, I promise. There you go. The scrolling in the arcade on this section is actually a little slower than the Genesis one. And here we see all four playable characters and there's a layer of space junk that goes by every so often. Which they could have easily included in the Genesis port but chose not to. So yeah, I talked a little bit about the Super Nintendo port, which was published by Mindscape, and it is just kind of a disaster. <laughs> the backgrounds have a little more color than the Genesis game, but they don't really look like the arcade game. The gameplay is way worse, and the music in the Super Nintendo version is absolutely atrociously bad. I mean, it is just awful. It's hard to describe. You have to experience it. Only, I didn't want to play that version of the game, so I'm not showing it here. But yeah, I strongly suggest hit up a long play of the Super Nintendo one and just skip around to your favorite song in the game and listen to how they've murdered it. Now, there were several other games called Captain America and the Avengers released on other platforms. Notably, it saw release on the NES, the Game Boy, and the Game Gear. But none of those games are the same as this game. Those versions are regular 2D side-scrolling platform action games. They're not standard beat-em-ups like this one. You only have one plane that you walk on. Now here is where we diverge in the ending a little bit. The arcade version has a fancier version with more of these, you know, comic panel cutscene graphics. Where we see all the characters. It says all their names and everything. And then we see just other visuals of some of our in-game helpers. And then we get our picture at the end that we saw just a moment ago on the Genesis. And there you go. That is pretty much it. Man, this one was hard to make and took a lot of effort because of all these pauses that had to be inserted to let each game catch up with the other. Alright, so there's my complete playthrough and comparison of both the arcade and Genesis versions of Captain America and the Avengers. So my final thoughts on this one are, the game is definitely still worth playing on Genesis. It delivers a different enough experience from the arcade game that it's worth going through. And there's some of the music that I actually prefer in the Genesis version, even though it's pretty great in both the arcade and Genesis version undeniable that those graphics have taken a major hit, especially those backgrounds, and I still, I mean, I have to scratch my head and wonder why didn't they, you know, develop this game using the Genesis's normal 320 by 224 resolution mode. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess they could save a little bit of memory by going down to 256 instead, but, I mean, it, it just caused the game to have such a weak look compared to the arcade game that I don't think whatever the reason was, that it was worth it. I would have preferred fewer voice samples and better backgrounds and higher resolution characters than what we got. 
So here's a little footage of Vision walking around in the Genesis version for you to enjoy while I finish things up here. So Captain America and the Avengers on the Genesis, good game, worth playing, not great, and certainly not near the top of the genre. But what I can tell you is it's miles better than the Super Nintendo port of the game that came out over a year later from a different developer and publisher. Sniff sniff, what's that I smell? Could it be another complete trash coming? Well, it won't be next week, but you can expect that one to make an appearance in Complete Trash someday. Alright, so what do all of you think? Did Data East make the right choice in focusing so much resources to the voices on this game at the expense of the graphics? Did they make the wrong decision going with the Genesis's low resolution mode? How would you like to have seen them prioritize things for this port of the game? Tell me all about it in the comments. And that'll do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. If you enjoyed it, please toss it a like and share it online somewhere. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. If you're so inclined, you can support me either on Patreon or Ko-fi, or both if you have more money than you know what to do with. Links will show up both at the end of the video and down in the description. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.